In 5.3, we deal with something called the binomial probability distribution, and I've kind of introduced it right here for you. You can see a lot of similarities to what I'm talking about and what we have over there, or at least the idea of flipping that coin. So the binomial, binomial, what's bi mean? Two. two. Nomial name, two or outcome, two outcome probability distribution. Binomial probability distribution. In this case, by of course means two. Nomial means for us, it means something like name, term, outcome. For us, it means outcome. What this is, is a probability distribution where there are only two outcomes. Two outcomes. Something considered a success and something considered a failure. Okay, something considered a success and something considered a failure. Now, let, let me warn you ahead of time. You can make a lot of things into a binomial distribution. Remember rolling the die? We're rolling a die. And you, you have actually six outcomes there, right? But if you say this, if you say, my success is rolling a four, everything else would be a failure. Doesn't that only have two outcomes? You either get the four or you don't. Does that make sense to you? So we can make things into binomial distributions even if they have more than that number of number outcomes. We qualify them. One would be a success and one would be a failure. Nudge your you with me. So that's, that's what this means. We categorize our two outcomes as a success or a failure. That way there's only two of them, binomial. So a type of probability distribution there, where there are only two outcomes. Success and failure. Now there's a few things you need to know about a binomial probability distribution before we actually go and do any examples. And that's some, some vocabulary, some symbol, symbolization, notation, and what it takes to even have this binomial distribution here. So, Here's the rules for this thing. First rule. You have to have a fixed number of trials, which means you can't go and do this procedure for eternity. It's got to end somewhere. For instance, this is, this, you're going to find out that this was a binomial distribution idea. You're flipping a coin, you're looking for heads. Heads would be a success, tails would be a failure. Does that make sense? In this case, we were looking for exactly, hope you listen to this terminology, exactly 501 successes. Does this make sense? In this case, we were looking for 501 or more successes. successes. But it was out of how many tries? That would be our trials. So you, we fixed that. We had to fix that somewhere so that we can work with our problem. So number one, you have to have a fixed number of trials. You can't just flip the coin forever. be a fixed number of trials. Number two, oh, this one's got to be there, and you're going to be happy about this one, trust me. Do you remember, ho, oh, oh, well, you don't remember the digital rule, we just found that out, right? You're all going to be looking at the video, I'm going to have like a thousand views tonight about on that video for addition rule. But if you remember anything about the addition rule, now you looked back at your notes, which you should do occasionally, I hope, it's a long time between tests. Um, when you look back at there, you notice there was really, um, it, it, it mattered whether one probability depended on the other one, didn't it? It matters sometimes. And we had to have it so that those things were independent, otherwise we had a, a carryover. 
we had a crossover, we had to subtract that out. Remember that, when they could both occur at the same time? Uh, or where one probability affected the other one, that, that would make a big difference if we're having several probabilities in a row. That would make a difference. For instance, let me explain it according to this. This one, not so much. Exactly 501, that was just one probability. But this one, 501 or more. If you are flipping a coin, and what you get the first time affects what you get the next time, adding all these probabilities up would be extremely hard to do, right? Because 501, getting that head, would affect the 500 second or the 500 third or the 500 fourth, and you would have a huge, massive uh, thing to deal with. Do you see what I'm talking about? So these probabilities have to be completely independent, not based on each other, which means I flip a coin, everything resets. I flip a coin, everything resets. Back to 50-50 every single time. I roll a die, I pick it up. Back to one-sixth chance for all those sides. Are you with me on this, folks? They've got to be independent. They cannot, uh, the probability of one, one outcome cannot affect the probability of another. Or, I, I should say, the occurrence of one outcome does not affect the others. Trials must be independent. That means the outcome of one trial does not affect any of the others. Third, this is where we get the binomial part. We just spoke about this. <laughs> Each trial has to have only two outcomes, either a success or a failure, or what you qualify a success and what you categorize a failure. So each trial has only two outcomes. That's got to naturally be there. That's how we start this whole thing out. And number four, the probability of a, of a success has to say the same for each trial that you do. For instance, if we're flipping a coin a thousand times, we're not going to go halfway through and say, oh, we're going to switch coins, and this one has more of a chance of beating heads. Okay, that, that wouldn't work so well for us. So the probability of getting ahead has to be the same every time. If we're rolling a die, the probability of rolling a three, if that was our success, would have to be the same every single time. It can't change. So we could do this with a weighted die. It would just have to be that the probabilities don't change halfway through my experiment, or a quarter of the way through, or vary by trial by trial. Are you with me on that? Yes. Yeah, no. Okay. So the every time you repeat the trial, the probability of a success is the same. Okay, there is some notation that I got to give you. When we're dealing in a binomial probability distribution, we got some letters we got to deal with. First one is n, little n. Little n usually stands for the number of things, right? The number in a sample. In our case, n stands for the number of trials we're repeating. Number of trials we're repeating. 
I'm going to do this down here as well, kind of refer you back to this example. That's why I left it on the board. But if, uh, if we're doing this example, what is our n in this case? That's how many times we're repeating the trial, so our n would certainly be 1,000. Very good. N would be 1,000. <coughs> if you're going back in your notes, maybe write this under under this one. Rewrite this example. Don't get those two confused. Just, just rewrite that. Or we're going to do several more examples, so just kind of keep this one in your mind right now, okay? Trust me, we'll do more examples. I don't want you going back, because that, that was not the idea for the end of section 5.2. This is a 5.3 idea. So number of trials, N would be 1,000 in this case. That's how many times we're repeating that procedure. There's a couple other letters. One of them is... Little p, not big p, little p, there's lowercase. Little p stands for the probability that you are going to get a successful trial. Is little p going to change throughout your procedure? No. No, that's what we said right here. Probability of success means the same in all trials. So little p is going to be the, the probability of getting a successful outcome in each individual trial. The probability of a successful outcome for each trial. So put it in a single trial. probability of a successful outcome in a single trial. Okay, what's the opposite of the letter P? Q. Q, obviously. It's written backwards, right? It's no Q. That makes sense. If little p stands for the probability of a successful trial, or the probability of a successful outcome in a single trial, the probability of Q stands for, what do you think? Yeah, the probability of failure, for sure. This is the probability of a failing outcome. In a single trial. Well, we haven't dealt with our variable yet. We have n. n is going to be given to you. It's the number of trials that you have. p, lowercase letter p, is probably the successful trial. You'll also be given that. The same with q. You have to be given those things. Also, what you're looking for is the x. In our case, the x is the number of successes that you're looking for. Okay, the number of successes that you're looking for or the number of successes that occur in the end trials. 